Good morning, Rice. How are you guys this week? How is the weather where you are, I wonder? Today, where I am, it is very rainy. I can hear the rain on my window and I can hear a bit of the wind outside as well. It's not a very nice day. Maybe it's a bit nicer where you are. How's homeschooling going for a lot of you? I hope it's going okay. I know that some of you are doing live lessons, in, lessons online. Some of you are having some videos sent to you or having work sent to you. And some of you are still going into school because your families are key workers and that's really good as well. I just hope and pray that you're all okay and you're all doing well. And in Now, today we're going to carry on with our series in the book of Acts and we're going to carry on using our Peter and Paul story, Diary of a Disciple. It's the story of There we go. So let's have a look at this week. This week we are looking at Acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 12 if you want to read it in a Bible. And in this book the chapter is called Evil Ellie and the Peeved Jews. Peeved means a bit annoyed. So Barney and Saul ended up in Antioch and while they were there God spoke to some of the church leaders. He told them to pray and then send Saul and Barney out on a new journey. So they did. The Holy Spirit sent Barney and Saul on a boat to Cyprus. They took John, who was sometimes called Mark, a bit confusing, right, with them so that he could help out. And when they arrived, they told all the Jews they could find about Jesus. They even went into the town meeting places and told the people there too. Risky. Slowly they travelled around the, all the way around the island and everything was going pretty well until they met a man called Elimas. I'm going to call him Eli, with a long white beard in a place called Paphos. Eli was a magician. He worked for a very important and clever man who wanted to hear what Saul and Barney were saying. But Eli didn't want his boss to hear anything about Jesus or all the things he'd done. Uh, mean. But the Holy Spirit showed Paul just what Ellie was like. Paul, don't you mean Saul? You might be thinking I've just made a spelling mistake, but I haven't. You see, Saul was also known as Paul. Confusing. Yeah, I know. But let me explain. You remember I said that before, before that Saul was kind of interesting because not only was he a Jew, he was also a Roman. Well, his Jewish name was Saul, but his Roman name was Paul. So Saul equals Paul. Got it? Anyway, from now on, Saul stopped calling himself Saul and started only using Paul. So that's what I'm going to do too. You are an evil man, said Paul. You don't care about things being right. You are a liar and a cheat. You don't want to lead people to the one true God. You want to lead them away from him. Ellie stood there with his hands on his hips, looking like he really couldn't care less, with a nasty smirk on his face. But God sees you, said Paul. Ellie's smirk twitched a little bit, but he didn't move an inch and didn't say a word. Because you are against God, he is against you. Because you try to stop people from seeing him, he's going to stop you from seeing at all. Ellie's smirk disappeared completely as he realised he couldn't see anymore. He started running around with his arms stretched out in front of him, bumping into things and shouting for someone to come and hold his hand. When Ellie's boss saw what had happened, he instantly decided that what Paul and Barney had been talking about was real and that he decided to follow Jesus for himself. So how do you think that Paul and Barnabas felt going somewhere they'd never been before? How do you feel when you go to somewhere new that you've never been to before? 
I'm often a bit excited if it's somewhere I really want to go to, but I'm usually a little bit nervous and a bit worried as well because I don't know what it's going to be like. And when Paul and Barnabas went to um, Cyprus, they wouldn't have had a smartphone to look up and tell them or, or the internet to tell them what everything was going to be like there. <coughs> they wouldn't have had um, lots of things to find out about. They might have had a map to show, tell them how to get there, but that's it. They wouldn't have had all the things that we have today before we go somewhere new. So I think they probably would have been a bit nervous, but I imagine they were um, quite um they, they knew that God was with them, that God went with them wherever they went. But what was Elimas's or Ellie's response to hearing the gospel, to hearing the message that Paul and Barnabas wanted to tell them? He wasn't very happy about it, was he? He didn't like it. And here I've asked, how might people respond to you sharing the gospel? How might people react when you tell them the good news of Jesus? Sometimes people don't want to hear what we have to tell them about Jesus. And that can be really sad and it can also be quite scary. And sometimes that makes people not want to tell others about Jesus. But do you think that means that we should stop sharing the gospel with those people? Because wherever we're telling people about Jesus, it's a chance other people won't like it. Does it mean we shouldn't tell the gospel with other people? No. It's really important that we always share the gospel. And there's um, a famous person, I can't actually remember his name, but you can find out. And he said, share the gospel at all times and where necessary, use words. So you should be sharing the love of Jesus all through what you do and your actions and everything you say as well. But Jesus told us that the word of God, that the gospel is like a seed that we can plant in someone's heart. And when it's the right time, it will be watered and it will grow. So we could tell someone the good news of Jesus and they might not want to hear about it. But when it's the right time and when God says that it's the right time, that person will remember that thing that we've told them. And then it will grow into knowledge of Jesus' love for them. So we're going to pray now. And we're going to pray that we will be brave to tell people the good news about Jesus. And that to remember that God goes with us wherever we are and wherever we go, whether that's at school or homeschool or just down the road for a little walk. As it's probably all we can do at the moment. Dear God, thank you that you go with us wherever we go. Thank you that you went with Paul and Barnabas when they went to share the good news of you with other people. Thank you that they trusted in you and knew you were with them, even though they were probably sometimes quite scared as well. Lord, we pray that you will go with us wherever we go and whatever we do this week. And Lord, we ask that you will help us to be brave to share the good news with other people. Help us to realise that sometimes people won't want to hear about what we have to say to them about you. And they might be quite horrible or rude to us but it shouldn't stop us sharing your good news with others because that seed can take root and grow at the right time. Help us to share you with everyone we meet this week and where necessary, use words. Amen. Amen. I pray you have a really good week and I will see you guys or speak to you guys soon. Bye-bye.